guys, lately we have been learning about Jesus' power. Jesus' power calms our fears. Jesus' power calms our worries. And Jesus' power takes action. In fact, that's what we're learning today, that Jesus' power, power takes action. Yeah, you know, it feels like there's a lot of things I can't do right now. I can't go to work. My kids can't go to school. I know what you mean. I can't go to the movies, and I can't perform with the circus right now. Tell me one thing that you guys can't do. On the count of three, I want you to shout out one thing that you can't do right now. Ready? One, two, three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sure feels like there's a lot of those things right now. Yep. Well, the good news is that Jesus' power takes action. So there are things that we can do with Jesus' power. Yep, and today we're going to hear a Bible story about a time when Jesus approached a man. The man said, I can't. It's a great story. It's from the book of John. Let's watch it right now. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Our story today starts in Jerusalem, near a pool at Bethsaida. There were all these sick people that would lie around this pool, waiting to be healed. You can be a part of our story too. Go ahead, lay down, and pretend like you are by the pool at Bethsaida. Go ahead and get comfy. You're gonna be there a little while while we tell the story. Now the people in our story, they weren't so comfortable. In fact, they were all very, very sick. The Bible tells us that some of them were paralyzed, some of them couldn't walk, some of them were blind. These were really sick people waiting for healing, laying by a pool. Why were they lying by this particular pool? Well, they believed that every so often an angel of the Lord would come down and stir up the water. And after the angel had stirred up the water, the first person in the pool would be healed. So these people were willing to wait a long, long time, hoping that they could be the first one in the pool to find healing. One day, Jesus was walking by the pool and he saw a man waiting. Jesus knew that the man had been sick for a long time. The Bible says that he hadn't been able to walk for 38 years. So Jesus approached the man and said, Would you like to get well, partner? Well, would you? The man answered, I can't, mister. The man told Jesus, 
Jesus that there was no one to put him in the water first. He said, I can't get in the water to find healing. But Jesus answered. Well, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. The man rolled up his sleeping mat, got up and walked. He was instantly healed. praising God. So I want you to do the same thing. Go ahead and get up and I want you to jump up and down and I want you to cheer and I want you to celebrate because you've experienced Jesus's power to heal you. Wow, what amazing story. Did you see that? There was a lame man and when Jesus came, he told him to walk and the man said, I can't. Good thing Jesus didn't stop there. He told the man to get up, pick up your mat, and instantly the man was healed. Jesus' power healed the man, but the man had to take action too. That's right, because Jesus' power takes action. And when we have Jesus' power living in us, we can take action too. So maybe instead of focusing on the things that we can't do, maybe we should ask Jesus, what are you calling me and my family to do this week for others? What can I do using Jesus' power inside of me? You know, I have some ideas about this. Yeah. You could draw a great picture and put it in the front window of your house so that people can see it from outside. Or do some amazing sidewalk art so when people walk by your house, they get to enjoy it. I love that idea. Or you could even like write an encouraging note to a neighbor. Let's hear your ideas. On the count of three, I want you to shout out one way that you can do something for someone else this week. Are you ready? One, two, three. Wow, those are some great ideas. Those are some really good ideas. And right now in your thankful journal, I want you to draw a picture of the one way that you can do something for others this week. We're gonna go get ours. Draw yours, we'll be right back. Let's see your picture. My picture is taking cookies to a neighbor. Today's actually our neighbor's birthday and we are going to take cards of cookies to our neighbor. I love that idea. Well, I drew a picture of myself doing some fancy sidewalk art so that people can enjoy it when they walk past my house. You know what, I love that our neighbors do that. The daughters do that all the time on their yard and every time I'm coming home from a walk, there's new sidewalk chalk for me to see and it does, it encourages me, it makes me smile, I love it. What a I great love idea. You know, encouraging people is just one way we can show Jesus that we are thankful for what he has done for us. That's right. So our challenge for you this week is to mm -hmm. think of one thing you can do mm -hmm. for others. And then take pictures of the things that you've done, post them in our Facebook group so that we can see yeah. Jesus' power in action. Yep. We're super excited to see those. I need you guys to remember that Jesus' power, power takes action. action. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Ready? Okay. Yep. Hey, Gabe and Ali, have you guys heard of elementary Zoom room yet? Elementary Zoom room? What's that? It's the coolest Zoom party in town. I thought Zoom was just for my parents' work meetings and boring schoolwork. Nope, elementary Zoom room is super fun. We play games and get to hang out with other kids from Crossroads. That sounds awesome. How can we get to the elementary Zoom room? Your parents can find the link in Mrs. Rebecca's and Mrs. Gwen's letter or on the Facebook page. It's every Monday at 4 p.m. I can't wait to see you guys there. You too.